Hey guys, what's up? My name is Aaron Fleming. Welcome to another Film Fridays. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favourite cameras at the moment, which is the Olympus XA. So because I started collecting a lot of interesting cameras, one of the first cameras that I really, really wanted from the start was the Olympus XA. And inside this case is the Olympus XA and the A16 flash. Um, this combo is probably one of my favorite cameras at the moment. When I started reading up about them and started reading into this camera and what it could do and also what they were packing into this tiny little body which is like smaller than my palm, I realized that I had to have one. Basically this is a tiny little rangefinder point and shoot. You focus it down here with this little thing you put it up to your eye and inside you have a tiny little rangefinder patch just like a Leica. You can set the aperture on it as well at the front here. The shutter button is this tiny little red button. You barely even tap this button and it takes a picture and then you just rewind it on the back here. You can also pop the flash on. You can get the A16 flash for this and the A11. The A16 is the slightly bigger one. Most of the time when you see these for sale, you'll probably see them without a flash. I would definitely recommend picking one of these up with or without flash. Um, it's not the end of the world if you don't get a flash. You can find them pretty cheap online as well because it's mainly the camera that's the important part. If you push this up, if you push the aperture control up, you see that the light comes up and the flash will be ready to go now. So this camera is tiny. It is smaller than even a Yashica Minitech and I thought the Yashica Minitech is a pretty small camera. It is much smaller than like the likes of this which is a Minolta X300. The Olympus is tiny in comparison. The reason that I love this camera so much is just because of how discreet it is, how small it is. You can fit this into your pocket really, really easily and it won't get in the way. It's smaller than my iPhone and I just really love using it. It's just something about using a rangefinder and also using a rangefinder on a point and shoot this small. Now bear in mind that the rangefinder patch on this is a good bit smaller than what you'll find on a Leica or something like that. The lens on this is beautiful as well. Um, it is a 35 millimeter f2.8 Zuko, Zuko lens and that Zuko name usually denotes the higher end lenses from Olympus. So this small little Olympus which was released at the end of the 70s um, has that lens. When you are looking for an Olympus XA, don't be fooled because I was almost fooled when I got into it. Um, someone was telling me that I should buy their Olympus XA4 or XA3 because it's the follow on and a better version of the original XA. This is the original XA and the original XA has the rangefinder, which you can see by this little tab down here, but it also has the aperture control on the front, which the XA1, XA2, XA3 and XA4 do not have. They're all zone focus cameras where you can't even select the aperture. Um, you select, do you want to focus on one person, two people, or mountains, basically. Those lenses also have an f3.5 aperture instead of an f2.8, which is also something to bear in mind. The XA1 um, is probably the worst out of the bunch because that is like as bare bones as it get. It doesn't have this lovely um, shutter button that made this camera famous. It has a worse um, lens. Out of all of them, the XA1 is the one to avoid. If you have an XA or an XA2 or an XA3 or an XA4 um, and you can find an XA1 with a flash, bear in mind that those flashes are gonna work on any of the other cameras as well. So if you can find a cheap deal for an XA1 with a flash, Keep the flash, sell the XA1 on, and also pick up the original XA because it's definitely, definitely worth it out of all of them. So this camera has a self-timer mode, it has a battery check, and it also has a plus 1.5 backlit um, exposure correction. The reason I really love this is for street photography. It is so unassuming, you can always have it with, with you. And if you stick this camera, it only has like a few settings for focus when you do focus true so it starts off at 0 0.85 meters it goes to one meter 1 1.5 meters three meters and then infinity and if you stick this camera on infinity and then stick it on something like 
f5.6 or something you're pretty much good to go for street photography and it's so unassuming no one will even notice if you took a picture so i'm actually wearing a lav mic at the moment so the mic is actually going to be right beside where the camera is um so i'm gonna rewind it first and then i am going to focus that was it and then you can just Flip this closed because this button is so sensitive. It's super duper sensitive. It's like if you tap against it, it um, shoots. What I like to do is before I put it in my pocket, every time I shoot, I don't rewind the film until I'm ready to shoot the next time. And I have this in mind every time that I do go to shoot. So um, it's not like I'm gonna miss shots because of it. It just means I waste less shots because of it. I tested this camera while I was in Oslo. And as you'll see from the results in Oslo, you'll see that I got a few pictures of like just walls or of myself or just nothing, which was quite annoying because I'd waste, you know, a few shots of a 36 exposure roll. While I was in Oslo, I shot this with uh, Kodak Color Plus 200. Basically just choose this because for when I'm testing any camera, it just kind of shows me how good the camera works if the camera is exposing correctly without costing too much. So rather than putting Portrait, Portrait 400 or Portrait 160 through it and then kind of just wasting that if the camera is bad, at least because of the low cost of Kodak Color Plus, um, I don't feel too bad if the camera messes up. Um, and I also kind of already know what to expect from Color Plus because it, it's a really nice consumer film. Um, has really nice colors. Obviously nowhere near Portra, but um, it is beautiful film as well. And even though it's consumer grade, I don't think you can complain too much about it. I'm gonna show you the results from Oslo now, and I'll talk to you a bit about my thoughts on the camera afterwards. So we've spent all day filming interviews and stuff, and I'm gonna take a quick break now to shoot with this little baby. This shot is gonna be super annoying to get because I'm waiting here until a cyclist passed. I saw a few nice, you know, moments that I could have got, but sadly I missed them, I wasn't ready. I guess that's life. My impressions from that camera are as follows. The one problem I have with this camera is that it's really difficult to see the shutter speed. So the shutter speed's in the top left of the viewfinder. It's super, super hard to see under certain conditions, especially in the dark. Same with the same with the rangefinder. The rangefinder is very difficult to see in the dark, but if you can guess the focus, you're fine. I'm actually surprised by just how sharp the lens is. Um, and this camera really has blown me away. I'm not gonna say that I prefer this over the Contax T2 because I'd be lying if I said that. However, this is a great great camera for when I don't want to bring the Contax T2 with me because it's just so small and so pocketable. It's so this camera basically makes a Contax T2 even look big. So if we compare them like that, you know, it it does make a Contax T2 look big. Now, there are a lot of times where I don't want to bring a Contax T2 with me just because of the value of it, because how hard it's going to be for me to find a replacement. And also, I'll probably cry if I lose my Contax T2 or if something happened to it. With this, however, they aren't the cheapest and they're not the easiest to get, especially in Ireland. But I have four of these cameras just because they're getting scarcer and I just wanted to have them. They are beautiful, beautiful cameras and I'm, I don't can't find faults with them. I really can't but if you are interested then just shoot me a dm on instagram and you know we can try work out a deal if you do want to buy one other than that there's not really much to say i really really do love this camera uh, i don't really have anything bad to say about it the lens shocked me um, i love just how small it is and i think it's probably one of the most iconic and underrated cameras out there if you know me you know that i thought that i'd really like slrs 
um, I actually kind of fell very out of favor with SLRs. While SLRs are great for a lot of things, um, they do have a shortcoming in that they're quite big. And a camera that's big and bulky, I'm gonna bring around with me less and less. Whereas something like the Olympus, the Contax T2, the Ashika Mini Tech, and other cameras like the Canon AF35, um, these cameras, I'd happily just have in my pocket and I think that the lenses on each of those are sharp enough to justify me bringing them instead of an SLR. Also most of them are autofocus or really easy to focus. I think it makes up for the fact that it doesn't have quite the wide aperture that an SLR has. I think I'd always pick something like this over an SLR. Um, my plan with Two of these is this one and one of the other Olympus XA's um, that I have is to shoot this one in color and the other one in black and white. So I basically have, as I said, four of these. I have one which is like this, which has an A16 flash. I have one with the smaller A11 flash, which I'm gonna use with black and white film. And then I have two more that I have to decide what to do with yet. Um, my friend Keith Driscoll is using one at the moment. And I think Jess might get that one um, after he's finished using it. So I'm basically just letting him have a loan of it, use it, see how he feels about it because he hasn't really shot much um, film before. And I kind of just wanna convert all my friends to film basically, um, because it's just such an awesome medium. Thank you so much for checking out this video uh, if you do enjoy please make sure to give a like share and subscribe and also make sure to share if you have other friends that you want to get into film photography and you want them to buy you cool cameras then share my videos on with them and hopefully they will buy you Olympus XA's and other cameras if you have any questions about cameras you're thinking of buying or cameras that I've mentioned make sure to leave a comment down below um, and I will get to it as soon as possible or else send me a DM on Instagram and I'll be sure to get back to you I'm gonna be working on a lot of these film photography videos over the summer as well as a lot more music so my plan is to have two videos a week one music related one film photography related out on a Friday um, and yes I hope you subscribe I hope to see you again in future videos thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again in the next video take care bye bye